To take part in the African Revolution, it is not enough to write a revolutionary song. You must fashion the revolution with the people. And if you fashion it with the people, the songs will come by themselves. These are the words of Sekou Toure, a man whose life was a testament to this belief. Born on a chilly January day in 1922 in the heart of Farana, French Guinea, Toure's journey began. A young man with a burning passion for justice, he found himself embroiled in labor union activities and fervent anti-colonial movements. In the midst of his struggle, Toure saw the need for a unified front against colonial rule. In 1950, he founded the Democratic Party of Guinea, or PDG, a significant force that would challenge the French colonial power. And so, a revolution was set in motion. Sécouture was not just a man, he was a movement, a revolution in the making. In the heart of Africa, a new nation was about to be born, led by a man whose vision transcended colonial boundaries. This man was none other than Sekou Tour, a charismatic leader with an unyielding commitment to the pursuit of national sovereignty. The year was 1958, and the winds of change were blowing across the African continent. In France, President Charles de Gaulle proposed a referendum, offering French African colonies a choice. They could either maintain their association with France under a new form of community, or they could choose full independence. Touré, who had founded the Democratic Party of Guinea eight years prior, saw this as an opportunity to break free from the shackles of colonial rule. He actively campaigned for complete independence, urging his fellow Guineans to seize the moment and shape their own destiny. This wasn't a decision to be taken lightly. The path to independence was fraught with uncertainties. There were fears of economic instability, political chaos, and the daunting task of nation building. But Toure, with his unwavering belief in the resilience and potential of his people, was undeterred. His message was clear and powerful. Guinea was ready to stand on its own. And stand on its own it did. The referendum was held and the people of Guinea spoke loudly and clearly. They chose independence. On October 2, 1958, Guinea became the first French African colony to gain independence. This was a historic moment, not just for Guinea, but for Africa as a whole. It signaled the beginning of the end of French colonial rule in Africa. Tory's vision and determination had paid off, but this was just the beginning. Independence was a victory, yes, but it was also the start of a new journey. A journey of nation building, of defining Guinea's place in the world, of navigating the complexities of post-colonial Africa. And so, under Tory's leadership, Guinea stepped into a new era of self-determination. This was Guinea's fight for independence, a fight led by a man who dared to dream, dared to challenge the status quo, and dared to lead his nation into a new era. With independence came the freedom to chart a new path, a path uniquely Guinean and uniquely Touré's. This path was marked by a foreign policy that Sekou Touré termed positive neutrality. This wasn't a policy of sitting on the fence or playing both sides. No, this was a policy of making decisions that were, above all, in the best interest of Guinea. It was about maintaining independence without aligning with any major power bloc. Tour was a critic of both Western imperialism and Soviet communism. He didn't shy away from voicing his concerns about the influence of these superpowers on the African continent. He believed that the future of Africa lay in the hands of Africans, not in those of foreign powers. But it wasn't just about international relations. Toure was equally focused on the domestic front. He believed in the power of socialism as a tool for economic equality. He implemented socialist economic policies that aimed to redistribute wealth and resources. One of his major initiatives was the nationalization of industries. He believed that these industries, which were once in the hands of foreign powers, should be returned to the people. It was a bold move, one that was met with both praise and criticism. In addition to nationalizing industries, Toure also implemented land redistribution policies. He believed that every Guinean should have a right to land, a right to cultivate and reap the rewards of their labor. This was not just about economic rights, it was also about dignity and self-respect. Toure's policies were a reflection of his conviction that Guinea should stand independent and self-sufficient. He wanted Guinea to be a nation that didn't just survive but thrived on its own terms. It was a vision of a nation that was not just free from colonial rule, but also free to chart its own course. And while his approach was not without its critics, there's no denying that Toure's policies were driven by a deep-seated belief in the power and potential of Guinea and its people. 
Touré's policies were a reflection of his conviction that Guinea should stand independent and self-sufficient. But with power comes the potential for its misuse, and under Touré, Guinea saw its share of darkness. As we delve into the depths of Sekou Touré's rule, we uncover a more sinister side, a side marred by the iron grip of authoritarianism and political repression. Touré, once the beacon of hope for Guinea's independence, began to wield his power with an intense fervor. His regime, initially hailed for its commitment to sovereignty and self-sufficiency, gradually morphed into a dictatorship, with Touré at the helm, steering the nation towards an era of fear and oppression. His rule became synonymous with the suppression of political opposition. Dissenting voices were quieted, and those who dared to challenge the status quo were met with severe consequences. This was a far cry from the democratic ideals that the Democratic Party of Guinea, founded by Touré himself, was built upon. But the darkness did not end there. Under Touré's reign, a secret police was formed. Known as the Conakry Death Squad, this clandestine group was implicated in numerous human rights abuses. Their activities cast a long and ominous shadow over Tour's rule, further entrenching the fear and silence that had become a hallmark of his regime. In a chilling display of control, Tour's government effectively stifled dissent, curbed freedom, and instilled a climate of fear. His rule was not just about maintaining power, but about exerting control, highlighting the stark contrast between his initial vision for Guinea and the reality that unfolded under his administration. The dark side of Tours' rule serves as a stark reminder of the potential pitfalls of power. It underscores the delicate balance between leadership and dictatorship, between guiding a nation towards sovereignty and suppressing its people's voices. As we reflect on Touré's leadership, we are reminded of the complexities inherent in the pursuit of independence and self-governance. We see a leader who championed the cause of freedom, but who also fell into the trap of authoritarian rule. For many, Tory's rule became a symbol of the dangers of unchecked power. His story serves as both a beacon of national resilience and a cautionary tale of the dark side of power. Sekou Tori's story does not end with his death on March 26, 1984. His legacy lives on, complex and multifaceted. The Guinean leader's international relations, much like his domestic policies, shifted with the tides of the Cold War. Initially, he sought support from the Soviet Union a move that aligned with his socialist economic policies. But as the political climate evolved, so too did Touré's alliances. He later shifted towards the West, establishing ties with the United States. Throughout these geopolitical maneuvers, Touré remained steadfast in his strong anti-colonial and anti-imperialist stance. His commitment to maintaining Guinea's sovereignty was unwavering, asserting his nation's place on the international stage. Tory's voice echoed in the halls of power, always advocating for the rights and autonomy of African nations. Yet, the reactions to Tory's leadership have been mixed, reflecting the complexity of his legacy. Some remember him as a champion of African independence, a leader who stood up against Western imperialism and Soviet communism. They celebrate him for his unwavering commitment to the pursuit of national sovereignty, his resilience, and leadership. Others, however, critique his authoritarian rule, pointing to the political repression that marked his time in power. The memories of the secret police, the Conakry death squad and their alleged human rights abuses still linger. The socialist economic policies he implemented, while aimed at self-sufficiency, led to economic challenges that Guinea grapples with even today. These contrasting views on Tour's rule reveal a man who was both revered and feared, loved and loathed. His story is a testament to the challenges of leadership in a post-colonial era. It's a story of a nation's pursuit of autonomy, of the struggle for self-determination, and of the fragility of power. Sekou Touré, a champion of African independence, a controversial leader, an indelible part of Guinea's history. His story is a testament to the complexities of navigating the post-colonial era in Africa.